Hi everyone, from this video, we are starting a new series which is about sorting algorithms. Let's first understand what are sorting algorithms. So a sorting algorithm is used to arrange elements of an array or a list in a specific order. So this specific order can be, let's say increasing, can be decreasing, or it can be any custom order which the user can define. So basically we are arranging the elements based on some predefined order. And the algorithm that is used to perform that operation, it is known as sorting algorithm. So few of the famous sorting algorithms are insertion sort, bubble sort, selection sort, quick sort, merge sort, heap sort. So there are many sorting algorithms that exist, each have their own pros and cons. So depending on the problem that we're trying to solve, we'll pick one of the sorting algorithm and use it. So let's say we're given this input array, or this can be a vector or a list, and we have to sort it. So now this can be sorted in many ways. Let's first say we are sorting it in increasing order. So in increasing order, the smallest element will be the first one. So we'll have one, two, then we have two threes. So this is the result when we sorted this list in increasing order. Now we sort this list in decreasing order. So this is the output that we'll get if we sort the list in decreasing order. We could also sort this list based on some custom operation. Let's say we are sorting it on decreasing frequency. So here we have three which is occurring twice in the list. So three will come first, then the remaining elements will come because all are occurring only once. So we can sort based on the increasing, decreasing or any sort of custom operation that we want based on the problem that we are trying to solve. So the algorithms that we use for this purpose, they are known as sorting algorithm. Now there are properties associated with the sorting algorithm. Let's have a look at them. First is in place sorting. So an in place sorting algorithm uses constant space for producing the output. So when we're trying to sort the input array or list, if the sorting algorithm uses some extra space and that extra space is not constant. So by constant, we mean that irrespective of the size of the array that we are sorting, it should not depend. So it means that space is not a factor of n. So if space does not depend on the size of the input, that means that the algorithm is using constant space. So in that case, we say that the algorithm is in place or the sorting algorithm is in place sorting. So it could also be the case that the algorithm we are using does not use any extra space. So it just modifies the order of the elements or shuffles them to produce the output. So if the algorithm uses no space or a constant space, then we say that the algorithm is in place. So like insertion sort, selection sort, so these are in place sorting algorithm, whereas merge sort is not in place. So if we say that this array size is n, so if the sorting algorithm uses space, let's say order of 1 or order of k, which is both constant, then we say that the sorting algorithm is in place. But whereas if it is a factor of n, or n by 2 or anything, or log n, then we say that it is not in place. Because the size increases, then this factor of n also increases. But in this case, when the size is not a factor of n, then this size is constant. So this will mean that the sorting algorithm is in place. So this is also one of the important criteria when we are trying to solve a problem and choosing the appropriate sorting algorithm. So if we're trying to sort a huge list, then we preferably want to use some sort of sorting algorithm that uses no extra space or constant extra space because we want to reduce the space complexity. 
Now, other than this in place sorting, we also have internal and external sorting. So, when all the data that need to be sorted cannot be placed in the memory, then the sorting is called as external sorting. So, this is used for massive amount of data. So, when the input size is very huge, then we use some form of sorting which is known as external sorting. But when the all data can be placed in memory, then we call it as internal sorting. So let's say you have a file, which is a huge file, let's say a 5 GB file, which has one string per line. So which sorting algorithm would you use to sort the file? So if you choose any sorting algorithm to sort this huge file, then most of the sorting algorithm will place all the data in the memory. So if you place 5 GB of file in the memory, then this would not be very memory efficient because it is a huge file and it is the huge burden on a system to load this much of file in the memory and then do sorting operation on it. Now for such kind of operations, we do external sorting. So in external sorting, we make use of some form of external storage, which let's say can be in form of disk. So the basic fundamental is instead of loading the whole 5 GB file in memory, what we could do is, let's say load 100 MB chunks in memory, then we do a sorting operation on them. So we sort them and then we write them back to disk. Then read next 100 MB a chunk, bring it in memory and do the same sorting operation and write them on disk. Let's say this is our disk. Now we have many chunks which are all sorted. So these are sorted chunks. Because we split the file into chunks, read all the chunks one by one and sorted them and wrote them back to disk. Now what we can do is we can read two chunks at a time and then merge them and then write them back to disk. So basically we started with let's say 10, then we combined two of these, then we again combine two of these and at the end we'll be left with only one. So that will be our sorted file. So this form of sorting is also known as NWAY merge or external merge sort. So we're not placing all the data in the memory, but we are placing chunks of data in the memory, sorting them and using some form of external storage like disk and writing it back. So this is useful when the input data is so large that it is not very efficient to place the whole data in the memory at the same point. So in those situations, we use external sorting. Now comes about the stability of a sorting algorithm. So a sorting algorithm is considered stable if the two or more items with the same value maintain the same relative position even after sorting. So if there are multiple values which are same, let's say this is our input. So if the algorithm is stable, that would mean that this one, which is on the starting, so this one basically comes before this one, once the array is sorted. So how does it matter that which one comes first or which one comes second? Because anyways, these are one. So why is the stability so important? Now, when we're dealing with primitive data types like some integer or a character, this might not matter much. But let's say we are using a structure and we're trying to sort it. So in those situations, stability factor becomes important. Let's take an example. Let's say we have this pair. So I've taken this name, which is in alphabets, D-A-G-E-C. And let's say these are the marks that these name of the people have scored. Now, if I sort this list of pairs by name, then I will get A, C, D, E, G. Because A comes first, then C will come, then D, then E, then G. So I've sorted by name. Now, if I also want to sort this by marks. So now the problem is if I sort them by marks, and the algorithm that I use is not stable. So now we have three values which have 90 marks. So, 
So if it does not maintain the order, then any of these can come first. So G can come first or C or D and then A and E. So this is a valid output because I'm giving the input as sort by marks. So it has sorted by marks. But in this case, the name order is not sorted because preferably I will want the order to be that C should come first, then D, then G, and then when I'm sorting A and D, then A should come first. Because I would preferably want that when the marks are same, the order in which name was present, that should be preserved. Because, But in case this was a stable sort, if we do a stable sort by marks, then it would preserve the order of name when the marks are same. So for the name C, D and G, we have the same marks. So if we preserve the order, then C will come first, then D, then G. And between A and E, A should come first and then E. So this output is more readable and useful because it has the sorting by marks also. And, and when the marks are same, the list are sorted by name. So in those situations, stability of a sorting algorithm becomes very important because we'll want to preserve the order when the values are same. So the algorithms which maintain the order when the same values are there, those are known as stable sorting algorithms. So like bubble sort, insertion sort, merge sort, count sort. So these all are stable sorting algorithms. Now it depends on the problem that we are trying to solve, whether the stability matters or not. So if the stability matters, then we'll have to choose one of these sorting algorithms. Now let's look at the sorting algorithm that is provided in the C++ STL library. So let's say I'm given this vector. So this can be vector, array or a list. So I have these 10 elements. If I want to sort them in increasing order, we have this function std sort. So in this function, I just need to provide the starting and the end. So basically the begin point and the end point, and this will give me the sorted order of the array. If I want to sort in decreasing order, I can just provide a comparator function, which basically tells the algorithm that I want to sort in the decreasing order. Now, now these are the situations when the sorting order that we want is simple and the algorithm has by default implementation for those. But there can be situations when we want the sorting to take place based on some custom operations that we define. So in those situations, we can write our own custom comparator that will do the sorting. So let's take an example. So let's say we have this vector of pairs. So the first element of the pair is a character and the second element is an integer. So we can think of it as the same example that we took earlier. So name and marks. So D is the name and 90 is the marks code. So if I want to sort it using a custom operator, then in the third parameter, I will provide a comparator and then I will write the implementation for this comparator. So the custom comparator will take two elements of this list and then do the comparison operations on them. So here what we have done is that if the second element of the pair is same, if P1 second is equal to P2 second, then compare based on first. Otherwise, compare just the second. So what we're doing is we are first sorting by marks. And if marks are same, then we are sorting by name. So 90 marks are of D, G and C and 95 marks are of A and E. So first we are sorting based on marks. And if marks are same, then we sort by name. So if we sort these by names, then we'll get C, D and G. And if we sort these by name, we'll get A and E. So our output will be C, D, G, A, E. And C marks are 90, D is also 90, G is also 90, A is 95 and E is 95. So based on our use case, we can define any custom comparator and give it to sorting function. So the sorting algorithm will bring 
each of the two pairs of the list to this comparator function and then the comparator function will decide the order of the output. So let's see the output of this program. So for this input array, which is 15896734200, when I sort it in increasing order, it starts from 0, 1, 2 till 9. And when I sort in decreasing order, it starts from 987 till 0. And now for this input pairs array, so I've sorted it using a custom comparator. So in the custom comparator, first I sort by the second element of the pair. So I sort by marks first. If the marks are same, then I sort by name. So here three elements have the same marks C, D and G. So first C should come, then D and then G and then remaining A and D because both have the same marks 95. So if we have any special requirement on how to do a sorting, we, we can make use of the comparator function. Now this was regarding the inbuilt sorting function that the library is providing to us. But we should also be aware of all the sorting algorithms that are there. So these are the famous nine sorting algorithms that we should be aware of. So the inbuilt sorting algorithm in C++ makes use of a combination of heap sort, quick sort and insertion sort. So depending on the input size and the partitioning, it chooses one of these algorithms because you can see that the insertion sort best time complexity is order of n. So this happens when the array is already sorted. So the library first checks the input and based on some logic, it decides which algorithm it wants to use in the sort function of the STL library. So when we are doing the comparison of the sorting algorithm, we consider four important points. So, so first three are related to time complexity. So what is the best case time complexity? What is the average and, and what is the worst case time complexity? And the fourth point is space complexity that how much extra space that the algorithm requires to do the sorting. So the algorithms that uses order of one or order of K. So these are in place sorting algorithms because these use constant space to perform sorting. The other algorithms use some extra space which are dependent on the input size. So like merge sort uses order of n extra space. So if the array size is increasing, then the space complexity will also increase because it is a factor of n. So depending on the problem that we are trying to solve and the constraints that we have, we can choose one of these sorting algorithms. In the coming videos, we'll see in-depth details on how all the sorting algorithm works, how we came to this average case complexities, best case, worst case, space complexities. So we'll discuss all of these in detail. And so this slide can act as a cheat sheet whenever you want to have a quick glance on all the sorting algorithms that exist. So that was all in this video about the introduction of sorting algorithms. In the coming videos, we'll see these sorting algorithms in detail. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. If you like my content, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.